So as you can see, we've added a few more guides in now. We've got a nicer flow of the hair. It's a bit st strange at the back and a bit flat here, but we're going to uh, look at ways to remedy that now. I've increased the density to 10. So if we drop back down to 1, things are looking a little bit faster. We can increase the density to 10 like so. You could even go further, but like I say, when it comes to working in the viewport, especially when we come to uh, turn the fur back on, uh, it may work, run a bit slower. So, but what you could do is set the density to 10, but then go to uh, the preview options and then drop that down to 10%. What you're essentially looking at here is the preview. Um, the actual primitives control here is what is going to be rendered. So rather than playing with this, you could get the density set to what you want, but then adjust the preview here, and that will drop it down. So maybe we just want that at 50%. And you can disable uh, so that when you run the preview, it will only show the primitives that are in the view. Remember when we were working on the fur and we clicked the preview button, it only showed the fur which was in the viewport. Um, so if you want everything updating, you could ch check that as well there. Uh, another thing as well is, just while we're here, at the moment the hair is black, you could change the colour, and this again, this is just the preview, this isn't the actual colour of the hair when it's rendered, you could change the colour in here to yellow, or to whatever you want. You could make a blonde, could give her red hair, we could give her whatever. So let's just leave it at black for now, just to, just as we're working through. So you've got your guides. You've seen how to just control those guides and bend them and manipulate them, just to quickly pose this, the hair. And obviously these guides can be animated. Um, you can do all sorts with them. And with the utilities here, there are lots of other options for you to play around with and experiment with. But what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the modifiers tab and what this will do is add on extra controls on top of the hair so if we click this button here to add a new modifier and if you use render passes this is exactly the same it looks exactly the same so now we have these options here now obviously there are some more dynamic based uh, systems here like wind force um, I think there's a uh, collision somewhere um, now we're not looking at animation or anything like that, we're just looking at posing the hair just so that we can render her for just a still frame illustration. Um, what you can do is we could use noise, that will just add a bit of noise obviously to the hair, uh, but instead we're going to look at clumping. Let's click OK. Now that adds a node down here and Every time you add a new node, it will just add it into the list down here so that you can come in and that you can edit them. Now at the moment, the clumping isn't doing anything and this is because you have to, have to specify a map which is going to guide how the clumps look. So if you scroll down to the bottom, go to set up maps, it will open up this window here. Now, if we click generate up here, we'll see these yellow spots, uh, yellow sticks appear. And each of those yellow sticks is essentially a clump. So if you want tiny clumps of hair, this will work quite well because there's quite a lot of sticks. If we set that to 0.5 and click generate again, as you can see, we've got fewer clumps to work with. Set it to 0.1 and generate, and that's even fewer. So that depends on the style of the hair you're looking for, whether you want those big thick clumps which come to points at the end or whether you want lots of individual clumps. Uh, let's try 0.5, click generate. And obviously this all gets output to a map. So you could load in a previously generated map. Uh, if you've maybe painted a PTEX map that you want to use, you could do all that sort of stuff. Um, for now, we'll just leave it like this. Actually, 0.5 might be a bit much. Let's see what 0.4 is like. Let's click save. And that will generate that map. As you can see now, the hair is following those clumps and coming into these nice points. And it has, it has affected the overall shape of the hair, but we've got clumps in there now that we can control. 
we can adjust the mask in here set that to 0.5 that's sort of the overall influence if we set that to zero then it's back to no clumps one is full clumps and again down here we've got a sort of a, a multiplier we can set the clumps to two and that's just going to increase it past the point of control well past the point that we've specified so if you see down on this curve down here we've got the base which is this thick and we go down to the tip like so we can adjust that so the tips get wider so maybe you don't want them to come to complete points you can adjust that like so we can also make the base thicker like so as you can see that's just thickening up the base and helping to fill out what had, what had suddenly become a bald spot I can speak from experience about bald spots um, a volumizer just makes the uh, the clumps a bit thicker as you can see just gives them a bit of volume basically and then there are all sorts of other sort of effects that you can play around with down here you can make the clumps curl you can make them add noising to them make them flatter but for now I'm quite happy just to leave the clumps as they are and then we can go back in and just start to play around with the uh, the curves and get the sort of shape that we want like I say there are other modifiers in there that we can play with we could add a coil again I'm just loading these in experimenting with them if I turn that off turn that on you can see it's just added a bit of a curl um, to the uh, to the clump well actually that that's working on a on the hair as a whole rather than on a per clump so that's just making the hair curly we can right click and delete that if we don't if we no longer want it um, and obviously there's noise if we want to go in and add a bit of noise to the hair just so it's not as uniform and flat again you have sliders you can play around with we can put points in here so there's more noise in the middle less at the end you can just see it uh, working there if we set that to two just to double it up a little bit can just see that having a slight effect you probably see it more if the hair was denser so don't worry about that so again you're now left to play around with these and just experiment you've got all these that you can play around with obviously the animation based ones and the dynamics based ones they're not really used here because we're not working on dynamics you have your guides in here so you can play around with those a little bit more your density and just like with the fur you can adjust the flow of the uh, of how each primitive or strand of hair uh, goes grows over the surface of the head um, this is just to if you know these work if you uh, if you have a model where some polygons are bigger than the others then uh, the hair will distribute evenly over both polygons regardless of the size whereas when it's off the uh, the distribution might be denser on smaller polygons than on larger polygons but as I said before it's easy enough just to check by clicking and unclicking now one more point I want to just point out before we I leave you to play around with this adjust the fur and then we get into rendering um, is the more primitives app now basically let's say you have a bald spot at the front of the head here just ignore that for now um, basically each one of these strands of hair is a primitive and each primitive is an instance so this is basically saving data as we're working so all we're doing is we're saying let's just clear that so we click on that 
sorry, I lost my train of thought there. So you click on specify points and all we're going to say is, right, we want more primitives at the points that I specify. So we click on that, it opens up this window here and as you can see we've got a tool now and we can just literally paint over here like so and we'll say well this area was looking a bit bald so we'll just add a few more points in there save and close if you see there just a few more because we've got we're looking at a preview only a few more popped in but uh, if we up our preview to 100 get thicker hair but that's just an easy way of going in and adding fur in on the opposite scale let's say you have areas like this where the hair or the primitives are going through geometry just like we did earlier where the uh, the hair was going through the eye down here now basically we can't edit the guides to get rid of these few here but what we can do is use these up here if we click on this button that will let us select the primitives and if we drag with our middle mouse button they'll turn green like so we can say right we've got those selected they go through the ear so we don't really want them we can't edit them with the guides so now we click on this button and that will simply delete them update our preview so you can essentially go in and if there's some rogue primitives that you don't like the look of you can literally just select them and get rid of them so we have now got let's close this window down let's bring back our fur like so it's looking a little odd but we have hair built in we have fur posed and ready to go I'm gonna leave you now continue working on the hair adjust it uh, get the sort of look that you want or just move straight on uh, to the next file if you uh, if you just want to jump straight into rendering um, adjust the fur a little bit more as well um, and what we'll do in the next section is we'll leave playing around and defining these systems and we'll st just have a quick look at uh, getting them to render